All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about probably one of the biggest lies in survival. And trust me when I say that they are lying to you. Now, what am I talking about when I talk about the biggest lie in survival? I'm talking about ultra light, lightweight, minimalist, you know, five ounce or five pound different types of survival kits that circulate throughout the primarily YouTube, but undoubtedly other spheres as well. There is no shortage of companies and YouTubers and social media influencers, especially in the outdoor and survival scene, that try to get their audiences to think and believe in ultralight or super minimalist survival kits. And this is something that I try to tell a lot of people to avoid at all costs, but invariably, even just yesterday, as I was scrolling through my YouTube feed, I saw a five ounce survival kit video that popped up, and of course, I watched it with much disappointment. And the primary reason why ultralight and minimalist survival kits fail to really be truly useful or the danger that they present in their action as a ultralight or minimalist kit is what I consider the survival kit fallacy. And what I mean by this is when it comes to a survival kit, oftentimes with minimalist kits, the idea is that you're essentially checking off a list. Do you have cordage? Do you have a container? Do you have a blade? Do you have fire starting equipment? And essentially the list goes on and on. The reason why this is a particularly bothersome issue when it comes to survival is when you are creating a list that is just there, when you're creating a kit that is merely there to check off lists or line items, it doesn't necessarily mean that the blade you choose is the most usable or useful or even the most realistic blade for a wilderness survival application. Moreover, it also doesn't mean that the amount of cordage you're bringing is enough cordage to make a shelter. It also doesn't mean that the fire starting supplies you bring is either adequate for all conditions or once again, sustainable or usable enough for a long period of time. And what I mean by this is oftentimes a lot of these minimalist kits will say, throw five to 10, maybe 15 matches in a box and call it good. And it is very lightweight, very minimalistic and very practical in a form of checking off a list. But what a lot of people don't realize is when you have something like 15 matches, that means that you have 15 attempts to start a fire. That's assuming that the matches don't break, that the tinder is prepped well enough for you to actually start the fire, and that everything goes according to plan. Now, I'm not a proponent or I'm not against things like matches for fire starter. I certainly have some in this survival kit as well. However, I have multiple different backups such as lighters and ferro rods that are far more durable and have a lot more than 15 uses. So when it comes down to it, um, I'm not saying that a small kit for survival can't be designed in that there's no such thing as a minimalist kit. I'm also not saying that you have to, I'm also not trying to say that you need to be over prepared and bring a small duffel bag with you full of survival supplies. Survival is something that can be done very easily, very rudimentary and very simplistic. But at the same time too, your survival kit needs to one, match the conditions in the environment that you're going out into. So it's important to note that things like a hatchet may not be the most useful in the environment and conditions that you live in. Things like saws also may not be particularly useful. In some places, having something like a machete would be better than any of these three tools. However, it does mean that whatever kit you bring should be topical to where you're bringing it. You know, it should have applications and use in the specific environment. And also it should be realistic equipment. This is why I've preached for a long time that something like my personal survival kit, like this guy right here, is a part of my survival solution. But in addition to that survival kit, 
I also carry a full-sized, full thickness, you know, full tang blade. I also carry a hatchet and a saw. And with these tools, as you can see, I haven't skimped out. These aren't ultra light. They're not, you know, particularly small tools. I mean, this hatchet is a little on the small side, but realistically, these are full size tools that are reasonably compact enough for you to, you know, carry them readily, but also they are large enough to be able to do the task at hand. But most importantly, what I want to really hammer in with this video and really strike at the core is that don't buy into a lot of the, whether it's YouTubers, influencers, or even companies themselves that try to sell you ultra light or minimalist kits for survival or wilderness living. Because the reality is that there is no good shortcut to this. And if you are trading off, say, going with thinner cordage, if you are, say, going with smaller knives, you are really trading off your ability to use a knife effectively for outdoor tasks, all on the chance that you want to save some weight. And for me, realistically, the weight savings is almost never worth the amount of functionality and usability that you have to sacrifice in order to obtain those lighter weight goals. So the last thing that I wanna stress and the biggest piece of the pie when it comes to this lie of survival is the fallacy of checking off a survival list. Once again, I see so many YouTube videos out there, especially, they're probably the worst at it, and that is that they go over, well, we have cordage, we have fire, we have cutlery, so we're okay. And the reality is that unless your knives or your cutlery are truly usable, unless your fire starter is redundant and once again usable in a very a varied amount of conditions and situations, unless your options like cordage are substantial and once again strong enough to actually be useful for building shelters and making traps, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Just because something can be used as cutlery, just something can can be used as a container doesn't mean that it should be or moreover that you should be betting your entire life on it. Make sure that whatever you're carrying out into the field, whether it's for survival, bushcraft, camping, hunting, hiking, is actually a useful, usable tool that you can employ and field in your time out in the wilderness. Ultimately, time in the wilderness is supposed to be fun, reasonably stress-free, and enjoyable. And if you end up finding yourself in a survival situation, you wanna make sure that you give yourself the best possible chance of making it out. And that's why I've made something like my personal survival kit here that is, once again, a part of a larger survival system that includes more dedicated wilderness tools, but on top of that has a lot of realistic things. That's why a lot of people criticize me for the redundancies of things like mylar blankets and fire starters within this kit. But at the same time too, shelter and fire are some of the most valuable pieces. And in my opinion, I would rather carry a kit that weighs two pounds and has everything I need in it than to try to carry a kit that weighs five ounces and really doesn't have that many meaningful pieces of survival equipment in it. Now I am happy to see that many survival YouTubers have decided to kind of go along the mindset that I have for years and that is doubling down on things like Mylar blankets because I have done a video previously where I have actually broken down and opened up you know, and used multiple different um, Mylar blankets from cheap too expensive and it ends up proving out that mylar blankets kind of suck especially if you only have one and while there are a few brands that are better than others when it comes to mylar blankets it's just realistically best to have two of them especially because they're reasonably compact and lightweight but another thing that once again a lot of survival kits end up missing is something like a personal locator beacon and once again i know that these are not super cheap but 
a personal locator beacon can make a large difference in the outcome of your survival. Once again, I've said it for years, but a lot of people don't like to talk about them. And honestly, if I was gonna say, if you must go with the lightest weight survival kit specifically, just carrying a personal locator beacon, it's probably about the lightest survival kit that you would want to go for. And that's because once again, a real, a real personal locator beacon in times of distress is actually going to pinpoint your location, help search and rescue find where you are exactly and actually get you rescued because hunkering down in a survival situation may be necessary and may not be fun, but actually being able to get rescued is arguably or is inarguably the whole reason you have a survival kit. So if you can't affect your rescue, your safe rescue, then really all of these tools, all of this equipment and all of this experience is really for naught. Anyways, guys, that is the biggest lie in survival. Don't believe it, guys. Make a kit that realistically fits your needs, that has usable, real tools that you can actually employ in a survival situation and not just small tools that checklists. As always, God bless and I'm out.